Higher than the highest mountain peaks of Europe, men live in harmony with the Buddhist gods who all teach that nothing is what it seems to be. On the roof of the world, some children fulfill extraordinary destinies traced out for them many centuries ago. Ratak Punso is a Tibetan child who was born in exile. Although he looks just like any other child, his life is extraordinarily different. He lives in a monastery surrounded by monks and his parents. Destined to assume high functions, he will be given an extremely strict religious education and, progressively, will only be surrounded by monks, his tutors and servants. Ratak Punso has very little contact with other children of his age and must renounce almost all the joys of childhood. His only companions in games are friendly monks with almost maternal feelings. Three of them are responsible for teaching him to be wise, passing on their own experience. They're with him all the time, bodyguards in every sense. Nothing must be allowed to happen to this infinitely precious child. Darjeeling lies at an altitude of 2,500 meters in the foothills of the Himalayas on the road to Tibet. Since the Chinese invasion of Tibet, it has become home to a large refugee community. Over the last few months, the child has learned how to greet and bless the pilgrims who come to pay homage from all over India and even abroad. They bring him the katak, the traditional augural scarf, white like spiritual purity. Some have already met him before, when he was 80, in the twilight of his previous life. Tibetans call children like this a tulku, a born-again spirit in a new body. On this day, at the foot of Kanchenjunga, the third highest peak in the world, Darjeeling is preparing for the child lama's induction ceremony when he finally becomes a monk. Only a Grand Master can officially recognize a Tulku. The young Kalu was recognized by one of the most brilliant representatives of the Kagyupa school, Situ Rinpoche. He will preside over today's ceremony. We will follow that tradition strictly and uh, there will be particular prayers, ceremonies that are to install uh, the reincarnation and uh, after which then people will uh, celebrate by uh, making offering, taking blessing, etc. These induction rituals last several days. On this occasion, the child will change his name and adopt that of the previous Kalu. Like his predecessor, he will also become a Rinpoche, a title given to Grand Lamas. In Tibetan, Rinpoche means precious. <laughs>
Disciples from all over the world bearing an infinite number of offerings are assembled in the Great Hall. The offering of the mandala is symbolic. It represents the most sophisticated shapes, sounds and perfumes in the universe. The Tibetans hope that the child on the throne will reveal the spiritual and intellectual qualities of his predecessor during his education. And we lost uh, our uh, first Kalurumbache. Now they come back as second Kalurumbache. And now we all can see him there in, a, in an absolute peace. <laughs> Considered the highest reincarnation of Tibet, the Dalai Lama recognizes that his childhood, spent with adults and far from his family, deprived him of something important. But he also believes that the friendliness and goodness of his tutors helped him to acquire what, for him, is fundamental serenity, tolerance, and compassion. In Tibetan Buddhism, reincarnation is a basic tenet of the faith. Lamas are regarded as manifestations of the same person who returns to earth to continue his teachings and help other people. Lines of masters are uninterrupted since the 12th century. Tulku children are not considered as demigods, but as symbols of a human ideal. They are the conscience of spiritual Tibet. Lamas are there to transmit knowledge which would disappear without them.